Spoon of consciousness. Let's raise our frequency. Welcome to the Spoon of Consciousness podcast. My guest today is Steve, and today we're talking about skepticism in astrology. Steve, start us off. <laughs> Welcome to a typical English summer. <laughs> okay, um, as an astrologer with over 40 years experience of studying the subject and over 35 years of experience of actually doing the subject, over the years I've come up against all the arguments of scepticism and cynicism around astrology. So I'd like to give you, first of all, the arguments against astrology. This is why, in many people's eyes, astrology is just a load of bunkum. Firstly, there is absolutely no science whatsoever that suggests that the planets up there in the heavens have any influence on us whatsoever. Yes, there's a little bit of evidence that suggests that the moon affects one or two mollusks and oysters and that does the tides, but that's it. It obviously doesn't affect us. Secondly, astrology belongs in the dark ages. It's in the same realm as the tea leaf readers, the tarot readers, the psychics, the mediums. It's psychic mumbo jumbo. And anyone who believes in this is obviously an idiot, right? <laughs> because we live in a rational age where science can explain everything. And astrology doesn't work, it's obvious, it's rubbish. Thirdly, look at this nonsense in the daily newspaper, sun sign astrology. And you're telling me that a little paragraph of 12 different types applies to everyone in the world. What a load of rubbish, it obviously doesn't work. Fourthly, people who practice it, who go out their way, they're just con artists. They just take money from gullible people and anyone who's got any sense isn't gonna fall for anything like that. Mm. Right. As an astrologer, I can rebut all of those arguments. Firstly, astrology has been around longer than any science, any, any political regime, any religion, any culture. Astrology's been there for tens of thousands of years. The earliest records of astrology go back way beyond the initial period of history. Sun sign astrology is absolute rubbish. And here I'm in absolutely in accord with the skeptics and the cynics because it is, it's rubbish. And I know it's rubbish because I used to write it. I used to write for various well-known newspaper astrologers and obviously I'm not gonna name them. And it's drivel. How can one little paragraph apply to one in 12 of the population? It doesn't work, but that is just scratching the surface of it. What happened is that up until about 1680, 1690, astrology and astronomy were one and the same thing. Then the telescope became invented and the printing press became invented. And what happened is that as soon as newspapers started coming out, you, things like The Observer and Tatler, you've got people like Jonathan Swift and Daniel Defoe in print going, of course, anyone who believes in astrology is obviously an idiot, at which point, it became relegated to the shires. There was about 200 astrologers in London in 1660, and there was none in 1690. So it got pushed out. The, there is proof that astrology works. I can scientifically prove how the planets affect us. You can hear certain planets' radio signals on the radio or using electron microscopes. You can measure electromagnetic radiation coming off of Jupiter and Saturn. You can measure the effects of the moon and the sun. And using quantum astrology, which is a fairly recent development, you can actually now, using things like Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, you can measure with cause and effect how the difference between particle and wave can be applied to astrological emanations from different planets and show how it does affect us. Even planets like Pluto, smaller than our moon and four billion miles away. We can prove how it works. Mm. So I haven't got any time for the skeptics and the cynics. Uh, I suggest that those people who are skeptical and cynical about astrology, A, have not explored it. B, they're resistant to any type of mysticism, spirituality, or self-consciousness development, and C, they're 95% men. <laughs>
But this is this is what I wanted to ask you, right? So like I used to be a skeptic on everything. Anything to do with personal development, spirituality, things like that. I used to think someone said to me, Oh, have you heard of Tony Robbins? I just said Psh, straight away. And I know he's not the most popular person, but like the stuff to do with skepticism in astrology is like I used to look at it in a way where because I didn't want to perceive those things would be possible. Do what do you think that says about those people like do you think it's something to do with them that they don't want to acknowledge i honestly do there i'm, I'm going to name a couple of famous people who are well known for their not just skepticism but their almost pathological hatred of astrology people such as brian cox the astronomer mm -hmm. uh, uh patrick moore who's now dead but he hated astrology with a passion uh, dara o'brien stephen fry Paul Whitehouse, they're all on record as going, oh, astrology's a load of rubbish. Anyone who believes in that is obviously an idiot. And um, it makes me wonder why these seemingly intelligent people are so narrow-minded and closed down to even the possibility that it might work. Mm. Sure, there is a philosophy here that if you believe in something strong enough, it works for you because the power of positive thought and power of positive belief, it, you know, you can dream things in and if you want it to work, it will work. But the thing is, I would challenge any of these people. I would go up against them anonymously and just say, right, I don't care who you are. You can hide behind a curtain, give me your chart. I'll do your horoscope and then you tell me I'm wrong, <laughs> right? And, and I'd be able to pull out certain events and situations from their past and then I would defy them to tell me I'm wrong. And the question remains, why are they so vitriolically opposed? What is it about it? But what is it about astrology that scares them? I can understand it if it's, if it's a bishop, a cardinal, a pope, because astrology is a direct challenge to organized systems of religion. But when you see famous people who are not religious out there, having a go, you, you question, why? why? What, what's their agenda? What's the purpose? Surely they're more sophisticated and intelligent than this. This is the thing that I, this is what I think is personally. It's like, as, believing in something like astrology would suggest to you that you don't actually have it all figured out. And I think it puts it in like, it gives us a chance to put our insignificance into perspective. It's like Jupiter's like you said, the largest planet is bigger than all of them combined. If we look at ourselves in comparison to that, we gain an understanding of, oh, actually, I'm not that important, which may be the celebrity thing, right? Like, they may not want to acknowledge that that's the case. That's the way I see it. Is, there, is it's not a case about humans are seeing themselves as omnipotent, mm. when actually we inhabit a minute little planet on a small solar system on a remote arm of a minor galaxy in a massive universe. Mm. You know, and these are the people who go, no, there's no such thing as ETs or aliens or God or any type of yeah. anything out there apart from us. Yeah. Uh, and that makes, well, I could say white men, but actually it makes humans the dominant power in the universe. And they don't like to give up that idea of uh, their own divinity, if you like. So yeah, the fact that if you, if you take, if they even remotely open up to any type of spiritual meaning in their lives, they're opening up to something bigger than them. And that will cause their own personal belief systems to tremble like the walls of Jericho. I think, you know, one thing I've seen is like, uh, like we're on the subjects of celebrities and people in power and whatnot. I think there's a lot of uh, problems that they come into because they've elevated to this status in our society where they're considered like, you know, above everyone else. And that might give rise to these delusions of, oh, God can't exist because what about this? Like this stuff that I've built up to, which like ties into the whole beliefs, like money doesn't really like mean anything really. Like it's still gonna, the CEO and the janitor are still going in the same box when they're out of here. And I think like that's what makes it kind of uncomfortable for people to maybe even consider these things. This is what I call delusions of adequacy, <laughs> okay? I love that. They think they're omnipotent, they think they're better than anyone or anything else, therefore everyone must pay attention to what they say. And I'm not having to go celebrity or fame because that's the culture we live in. And some of them are really good, others are not. We've seen far too many examples in recent years of celebrities being exposed for various nefarious and subversive practices. Mm. And it just makes me realize everyone's the same. 
It's just the outside layer is different according to the way that your life works for you. You can't really say that some people are born to be famous, with one or two obvious exceptions, like royal families, for example. But neither can you say that everyone doesn't have a chance to be out there if they want to be. Mm, that's true. So, and yeah, I think like this is where it splits off, right? Like the beliefs that empower you and the beliefs that disempower you. Like they, it's just depending on the way that you look at things. Like you can say, I wasn't born to be the best athlete in the world, so I'm not going to try. Uh, or you could look at it and say, I wasn't born it, but I can put in the hard work to get there. And it's, this is like what skepticism is for me. It's like you can only believe in other things as much as you believe them yourself. They can only be that true if you know that truth in yourself. If, if you haven't got the evidence or experience or knowing of it, then it won't work for you. Let me give you a classic example of skepticism and belief and how it works together. There was an American president of about 30 years ago called Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. right? And he's on record when he was 20, 25 as putting down all types of spirit seances, spiritualist mediums, and anything associated with spirituality. He then married Nancy Reagan, who was a firm believer in astrology and many other things. She had a number of astrologers working for her and over the years she worked on her husband and she didn't get him to believe in things but she got him to accept the possibility that it was correct to the point where it's just documented she actually used astrologers to help Reagan make decisions. For example some of his meetings with Gorbachev that resulted in the end of the Cold War were planned time-wise by the use of astrology. Um, Certainly, Nancy Reagan's astrologers helped Nancy choose the running mates for Reagan's election campaign. Mm. It's well documented that the reason George Bush Sr. became Reagan's running mate is because he was a Gemini and Reagan was an Aquarian, therefore they will get on. Now that's, that's well documented. So it could be said that astrology is to blame for the Bush dynasty. <laughs> but I, I I'm not taking that one on. <laughs> I don't blame you. So when, when we come into skepticism, I think in any of these spiritual or ancient beliefs, what, like, what do you think it is about the way we live now that you know, encourages that skepticism? I think like consumerism, believing in the material world too much can distract from those kinds of concepts. Very much so. Consumerism, mass media, and, and the nature of people at the top of the chain who want people to believe certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to have a lot of fun going into a pub when I used to drink, and people, you know, be drinking with a few mates, and people say, what do you do for a living then? I go, oh, I do people's horoscopes. Oh, you don't believe in that old rubbish, do you? <laughs> and, and I used to have two stock in trade replies. One was, I make twice as much money as you. <laughs> and that always hacks them off. Um, even better, I'd say, yeah, actually I do. Tell you what, do you want me to prove it? And they go, yeah, go on then. And I say, tell me your birthday. Not the year, just the date and the month. Now when you know the date and the month that someone is born, you can work out the position of the sun in their horoscope. Because it's 360 degrees in the zodiac, 365 days in a year. So the sun moves one degree a day, almost exactly. Mm. So you get, if someone gives you a date of birth, you can work out where the sun was when they were born. Now I know the positions of the outer planets in the sky over the last 40 or 50 years because I study it every day. So I can work out when one of the planets in the, out, in, in the sky, one of the outer planets, would have spent a year passing in a really difficult aspect to that person's sun. Mm. So what if someone says, yeah, I was born on the 18th of March, you go, yeah, okay, so let me think. Pluto squared passed your sun in 1977. So you go, yeah, 1977, that was a really bad year, wasn't it? Lots of intensity and extremes and crises and trauma. And by this time, they're going, oh, you're really weird. You're spooky, you know? <laughs> I don't believe in it. You're just weird. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's another thing. Like, um, we fear what we don't understand, right? Like, you know, maybe coming down to even very rudimentary forms of racism, uh, homophobia, that kind of stuff. Like even down to people hating each other over what foods they eat. Like, it can just be that, you know, the fear side of the brain acting out, saying, well, I don't get it, so it doesn't make sense to me, so I don't want to have anything to do with it, or I don't want to, like, try and understand it. Um, do you, like, I think with the way... 
I know we're going to do another session later on self-development, but here's a classic example of this. Everyone, a lot of people will go, oh, I don't like you because of this. You eat that food. I'm a vegetarian. I, I'm a Hindu. You're a Jew, whatever. I'm black. You're white. You're green, whatever. Therefore, I don't like you because of this. And it's kind of extroverted, extrovert racism, regardless of what form it takes. I suggest that this is external manifested projected fear which should actually be turned internally, not externally, because this projection outside is a direct mirror image of the fear of actually looking inside. Psychology and astrology go hand in hand. And when people look inside into their own dark caverns, into the bottom of their own soul, and face up to their own fears, and then realize that there's actually nothing to be scared of, just the idea of what might be there, mm. then they stop projecting that fear outside. Mm. And people who know their own psychology are actually much more comfortable at dealing with anything else that's thrown them at the world. Mm. So when I see a skeptic or a cynic having a go at me, it tells me that actually you don't know yourself very well. You're not in touch with your inner core feelings and you're projecting your fears onto me. 100%. I love the saying, uh, how you see me has got nothing to do with me, but everything to do with you. Because it shows like, if you don't have knowledge of self, you're just projecting all the time, like whatever it might be. But um, like on the same lines of knowing your psychology, like even that field gets skepticism. And, and those things are not like proven more, but you can see their direct applications. So like when you present someone with this irrefutable things about themselves, like what kind of resistance have you come into? Well, Resistance is a good word. Look at the word fear. Use it as an acronym. False or fake energy aggravating resistance. Wow, okay. Oh, all right? That, um, a lot of people will just go, no, I don't believe in psychology. Nothing <laughs> inside me. I'm all right. I'm a bloke. I'm, on the, I'm all right on the outside. I like women. I've got me six, six pints a night. You know, I'm fine. Um, and that's obviously just, just another defense mechanism. The idea of actually looking inside oneself, looking into one's soul, checking how oneself is with oneself and with the universe and the world around you, dealing with your own fears, phobias, paranoias, insecurities, doing your best, not dealing with them, not resolving them because it's an ongoing lifetime process, but doing your best and not being judgmental or critical of yourself, accepting yourself as who you are, warts and all, by doing that, your whole outside world aspect changes. And the way you, you deal with the world with a much greater sense of understanding, compassion, empathy, and the world becomes a better place. Mm. Now, a cynic or a skeptic would have a field day with that statement, but I know it to be true. And I can produce 30,000 statistics of all the readings I've done in my life, which also these people say, yes, it works. So at the end of the day, you're never gonna convince the rational, scientific logistician. Which is, I want proof. Mm. Because even if you give them proof, they'll find ways of disproving it. I think like with the word proof is, it's not definitive because like you could prove that the branch fell down because you saw it. So that's your proof. But someone else who didn't see it, they might think you took it down. And I think the proof is only our perspective. So we might believe in this stuff if someone else sees our proof and from their perspective they can't see how it matches up, it's not proof to them. There's a very good case for saying that we live on one planet but there's six billion different worlds. Yep. You know, 100%. everyone's perception is down to them. Mm. If a tree falls in the forest and no one sees it, how do we know it makes any noise? Yeah. You know, it's that type of thing. It's, yeah, it's philosophical and in some people's eyes it's philosophical claptrap, but it's pertinent and it's relevant. A perception is everything. The way you choose to perceive the world as being. Are you going to look at the guy with a rucksack on his back and a hoodie on the tube train with fear, or are you going to look at him and just engage him in conversation? Mm. I think that's a good uh, part to end our discussion on. Um, the next segment we're going to do is about astrology and self-empowerment, which I'm really looking forward to. And we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.